Game Day View presented by Mercedes-Benz is back and we are almost halfway through the season. We had so many mental errors and mistakes. Speak for yourself, Aaron. We're doing great. And so are the Eagles looking to stay unbeaten against the Steelers and the Jets going for five in a row against whoever's playing quarterback for the Patriots. Guys who are making too many mistakes shouldn't be playing. Is he talking about Mac Jones or Billy Zappi? And maybe guys who aren't playing, give them a chance. Like Sam Ellinger in Indy. He is making his first start against the Commanders. And oh yeah, Packers Bill Sunday night. When the players really take over, you're gonna see the possibility of us making a run. Does anyone know what he is talking about? Cynthia, am I the only one hearing this? Game day view starts right now. Everybody, welcome to Game Day View. Something that you don't know about me, Rachel Benez, I just walk around hearing Aaron Rodgers in my head at all times. Greg Rosenlow, does that happen to you? That sounds like a terrible existence. Oh, that's not so bad all times. This is some fun, weird things. Uh, Cynthia Freeland, Patrick Claybon. Guys, I feel like, am I the only one that got the memo that October 31st is right around the corner? Dressed like Joker, looking oh. spooky. Cynthia looks like the Dean of Admissions. There's a pop quiz in the C block. No, I can't handle it. <laughs> uh, what, it. What happened? It just hit me that Cynthia's dressed like Harley Quinn before Joker corrupts her. <gasps> Ooh. So this is this is the thing. Like you okay, guys are a wow. themed Maybe costume. We, we really did this well. He's gonna you know, break bad we mid show. We thought we were friends, but we're starting to meld brains. I'll see your car again. Uh, guys, I don't know if you guys are keeping track, but things are getting tight in the picks. Uh oh, it took me Ooh. five weeks to get above 500, but I'm back, baby. Patrick still wears the crown with Greg and Cynthia right behind, and then, uh, yeah, I'm in the It's right never now. been closer, but as Aaron Rodgers said, like in, when people aren't performing, they're gonna have to need to be benched at some point. I, I need to get cut? Are you cutting me for I mean, according to Aaron Rodgers' is, uh, oh, MO here. Aaron, take it back. Uh, okay, a game I think we are all probably in agreement on. Bills, Packers, this is not a mistake. The words I'm about to say are correct. The Packers are a 10 and a half point underdog. Okay, Aaron Rodgers is a 10 and a half point underdog. I need to say that again. I don't think it's ever happened to him has not. in his has not. life. Ever a double digit underdog. Greg, surely he covers that number. No, surely. I don't think he does. I think it's going to be more likely it's a big Bills victory. I have him 34 to 20 over the Packers. I don't think the Packers offense has enough answers uh, to take care of things here. Matt Milano, I know he doesn't get talked about a lot, of the mm -hmm. Buffalo Bills as a linebacker, is a running back stopper. Running back and tight ends. He gets out on the edge. He makes sure they don't get good big plays to the outside. He shuts them down in the passing game. Why that's so important this week, Aaron Jones is really the only offensive player that Aaron Rodgers trusts, that I trust. Alan Lazard is not playing in this game. If you shut down Aaron Jones, I think you shut down the Packers' offense, and I think Matt Milano is shutting down Aaron Jones. Cynthia, do you have a big win here? I have a 10-point win here, Ooh. which is pretty big. 29 to 19 is the final score per the model. When I'm looking at this, it's kind of feeding off of what you said. Aaron Jones, let's give him his just due. In 52.8% of his rushes, he exceeds expectations. That is a very fun number, meaning that a normal running back would run for X number of yards. Well, he runs for more than that on over half of plays, most in the NFL. But the Bills, they stop runs the best by a wide margin, partly because of Matt Milano. More Milano. More, more about Boston College, Matt Milano. Ooh. You know, we like to get that in here. But realistically, it's all about that run defense and stopping Aaron Jones because that's really all that we have seen. Aaron Rodgers, his yards per attempt and his time to throw both down this season considerably. I don't love this O-line, so it seems like it's – this is and now Aaron Rodgers is going to throw for like 400 yards and five touchdowns. Mm. That's, that's I haven't seen that this year though. But honestly, you guys have a positive view of the game. You've got them more than their current output in terms of points per game. Where they're in 18 uh, point per game range. And honestly, I was surprised to find out that this team is has only committed nine turnovers, considering how bad the offense has been uh, throughout this season. It is Aaron Rodgers. He's taking care of the ball. Still, maybe take some risks. Twelve. Uh, take a few more Come on, chances. Get a little spicy. Do something. I, I do think 10 and a half points is far too much, but Ooh. that that's about it. I was trying to discuss with my wife. Hey, what reason can I say that they'll do better than 10 and a half points? And she's like, well, maybe the weather. So yeah, there's, there's <laughs> yeah. a low pressure system. Talk about the Good weather. Job, weather. <laughs> Talk about the weather. Who knows? 
but yeah, 10 and a half points is too much, but I just haven't seen enough to feel confident in the Packers in this game. Uh, I'm going b- Bills across the board, obviously, and I have them oh. by, I think, 11 points, 31 to 20. Listen, we were hearing them in this intro of Aaron Rodgers talking about his teammates. That's not a good vibe. We do a vibe check on this show often. Bills, great vibe. Packers, terrible <laughs> vibes right now. He's talking about his offensive weapons. He's like, some of these guys shouldn't be playing. Like, mm. as, a, as an offensive weapon, are you going to be stuck? Hope to hear that? Absolutely not. Maybe they need to play a little more Call of Duty. Maybe they need more Call of Duty in their <laughs> lives. They need something other than Aaron Rodgers just talking trash all the time. Uh, okay, is uh, Giants Seahawks a revenge game? Okay, hear me out. Remember, five years ago, I take you back. Eli Manning had started 210 consecutive oh boy. games until the one and only Ben McAdoo called on. Greg? Gino. Gino. He was a believer before Greg was. Didn't play poorly, but the Giants lost. Eli was back the next week. Real weird situation, okay? But like I said, could be a little bit of a revenge factor in here, or at least we're going to pretend there is. Cynthia, you haven't picked the Seahawks all season, people. That's Uh, wild. I didn't actually even know that. Hater. You're a true hater. They won four times. It's the model. Does that change this week? Have you convinced the model yeah, otherwise? It's gotta do it. Well, let me look. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't Ouch. change this week. I actually have the Giants winning this game. I have 24 to 22. So not an overwhelmingly convincing win, but I still think that the Giants edge them out. When I'm looking to see what Daniel Jones does with Saquon Barkley, it's really interesting because those two are both in the top 20 in rushing yards over expected because the opportunity for both of them on the field creates a mismatch against defenses. Obviously, the Seahawks have two great corners. They're young. They're really interesting. Tariq Woolen, Kobe Bryant, great names, fun to say. Let's throw it between the hashes, the middle of the field where Daniel Jones has been successful when he has gotten the ball out of his hands. So that all taken together means advantage Giants. I heard that all, and I just heard hater. That's what I heard. <laughs> hater. Seahawks hater. Come yep. after her, 12s. No, what am I doing? I'm sorry. No. Thank you for inciting that. <laughs> they, they won't. They, they recognize. No, they're nice guys. This is the sweet and innocent version of Cynthia. <laughs> maybe. maybe <laughs> Not you know, the bully. The alter ego. Things go wrong once Rachel uh, gets to her. I, because Cynthia, you mentioned Tariq Willen and Kobe Bryant. Uh, also, let's throw Boye Mafe yeah. uh, into this oh, as well. This is a, a team that's starting a whole bunch of rookies, especially on defense. And we saw at the start of the season, the results weren't so great. But take a look at what the Seahawks defense has done recently, mm. uh, especially considering they held the Chargers under 100 yards rushing. That was no, the first time. No, I like making fun of them. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing. People improve. They get better. And this defense has gotten better. And that's why I don't think the Giants are going to crest 21 points. I think Ooh. Gino and company, who I believe okay, in, okay. are going to top that. And the streak is over. The Seahawks will eventually be picked by some oh. model. Okay. So the, the Seahawks have the best quarterback in this game. We can all agree Yeah, we can on agree that. on that. Yeah. But they also might have the best running game in this game. <gasps> Kenneth Walker is playing that well right now. Excuse? I'm not saying he's better than Saquon Barkley, but he has a better matchup. I talked last week, how do you attack this blitz-heavy Giants defense? You run straight through those blitzes. The Jaguars did that well, but they didn't throw it well enough. Kenneth Walker can bust off big runs. He's second among running backs in the league at 6.1 yards per carry. You know what defense is the very worst in the NFL giving up yards per carry? It's the Giants. I know they've overcome it. They're not going to overcome it this week. And Rachel, you mentioned Ben McAdoo uh, believed in Geno even before me. That's not true. I wrote a whole article about it. You can check (laughs) it out. Pull up the receipts. Pull up the receipts. 2014. Greg (laughs) Rosenthal. It's still up there. I love that. Guys, I'm disappointed. I spent too much time with Cynthia this week. I was all on the Seahawks. She came on my podcast the other day, Bench with Banana, make sure you listen. And I was like, guys, Seahawks, Gino, defense is improving, da 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 And she just made some valid points and, unfortunately, pull up my score. Look what I did. Look what I did. I succumbed to the Cynthia pressure. You, you I've got the Giants switch? 27. I, no, it's done. It's I over. like that. I like it when we're split. It's 27-24. I will say, okay, there's a lots, of th- lots of things to be scared of this weekend. It's Halloween weekend. I don't know what Greg's going to show up as, but I'm sure it's going to be weird and frightening. Uh, <laughs> You know what's really scary? Saquon Barkley against that rushing defense. I know that they've improved, but they are still almost the worst rushing defense in the league in the Seahawks. So that is what I am going to be looking for. NFL Plus is the league's new exclusive video streaming 
subscription service. NFL Plus has your game day covered with live and local. And primetime regular season and postseason games right on your phone or tablet. NFL Plus is available in the NFL app mm -hmm. and at NFL.com. Subscription plans start at just $4.99 a month. And fans can visit plus.nfl.com and sign up for a free trial. The NFL Plus today. What do you think going to be in Brown? Uh, I'm going to be uh, like a small adult that people confuse for a child when they bring their children isn't up to that, the door. Isn't, yeah, that that's, what the, that's, isn't that what happens to you? Yeah. Uh, Mac Jones is back, which is good, right? Right? We're it's good. Pat's it's death good. on the other side of the break. Oh, I look forward to this one every time it goes down. Niners Rams. San Francisco has won seven straight regular season games against the Rams. I don't know how they are doing it. They are slightly favored against LA in SoFi. BT dub. Cynthia, who do you like in this one? <laughs> I, even though I don't like the injury report, I still like the Niners in this matchup. I only have a two point win in this one though. 22 to 20 is my final score. When I'm looking at this one, it all comes down to that O-line. And Matthew Stafford, he's not just been under pressure. He's been under the bad kind of pressure. Like, we see number 70 on the screen here, Jeff Noteboom, he, or Joe Noteboom, rather. He's not even playing anymore. He's out. They do get their center back. But this has been a really big problem. And I understand that Eric Armstead isn't playing, but that guy is right there. Nick Bosa, that doesn't look fun. So when I'm looking at this matchup, apart from, like, Cooper Cup, I'm not even playing fantasy players in this one. I don't know what's going on. Ooh, Nobody. Game. No. No Debo. That's a no that's Debo's Debo, a big deal. Hurt. No big is a deal. But I'm not on the Rams side other than Cooper Cup. Nope. Interesting. Nope. I, I don't put it not past it. the Rams nope. like to figure things out. They did just have their bye week. Yet I'm picking the 49ers too. I just can't trust uh, Sean McVay in this matchup. Those regular season games mean something. It doesn't work for them. I think what they need to do for the Rams is go back to Stafford under center. Before the bye week, you saw him playing against the Panthers a little differently than they had played for most of the season. They've started to simplify things. I know that's a dirty word. That's what Aaron Rodgers started to say, but it was a little more of the Jared Goff Rams offense where it's play action and your backs uh, to the defense and you simplify it for your offensive line too and you get your center back because the whole Stafford just figures it out when he's in shotgun. That's not working. He's not throwing the ball well even when they are protected. I just trust the Rams um, have less talent. Like it's weird to say that. You think of them as this crazy talented Super Bowl. team. I know, but no, you, I know, I'm saying it's crazy to say that. Yeah, because I know they get Van Jefferson back, but defensively, offensively, I think the 49ers have more players ultimately, and they win. They do, and getting Van Jefferson back, I think, is huge. Uh, when you come into the, in the game in the season with Matt Stafford having that injury, I also think that's huge. And as you mentioned, Greg, rest helps. Uh, doing high knees doesn't necessarily heal things, but taking you don't time know that. off. I like that Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson both got shots in this game. Mm. <laughs> they took shots yeah. at both of them. Well, Everyone's I didn't do it. Sprays you right now. Big target, uh, big shots. They, <laughs> they happen. But honestly, I am picking the Rams in this game. Wow. And the reason, I am starting fantasy-wise Allen Robinson because Ooh. the time off and the time away. Uh, Cynthia mentioned the, the loss of Joe Noteboom for the remainder of the season. I think perhaps things get pared down a little bit more where you're not trying to do all of the things that clearly Joe Noteboom was having trouble doing, uh, health or not. Mm -hmm. This offense gets a little more simple. Things get back to the basics and no Debo. I, I don't see looking back. He, he's got almost 700 yards in his career against this one team. Wow. I, I just have trouble imagining this team doing a whole lot of things considering the recent games uh, that have been played between these two. Well, teams. it is officially a stray bond. You are going solo dolo. I have the 49ers as well, 24 to 21. Listen, I know things change and, and players change and everything, but the, the 49ers being 7 and 0 against the Rams in the regular season. You gotta kind of pay attention to that. Yeah. Like he's, uh, I know that the two uh, Shanahan and McVay, they're like best buds. Shannon's figured something out and like gotten in McVay's head that he just cannot figure it out in the regular season. I don't think that we should ignore that. I think that it's going to happen. And then Christian McCaffrey is added. I know last week we were expecting some big things from him. It didn't really happen. I hope that he snaps this week and puts up some points on the board. Speaking of, let's do the math. I like that little segue. <laughs> Cynthia Christian McCaffrey had a season high 158 yards from scrimmage when he was with the Panthers earlier this season. Will he get into the end zone through the air and ground 
both week, pulling double duty. Well, it did get better with no Debo Samuel playing the chances for both. I think one will happen. I mean, he's averaging 4.9 yards per rush outside the tackles. We know those outside runs are what Kyle Shanahan likes to cook up. That's a career high for Christian McCaffrey. I think one on the ground is really a really nice opportunity to happen, but I don't know about both. I also love just a lot to ask. Sean McVay was asked about what do you think CMC getting out added to the 49ers? They had to bleep his answer. That's amazing. They had to fully they wanted bleep him. Yeah, they wanted his him. answer. Yeah. No, I know. And C Mac was like, no, I'm wearing my headband. Uh, San Francisco is the place. It's amazing. I love it. Okay, well, some familiarity for McCaffrey against LA this week and a familiar face back under center for New England for the whole game? Maybe. The most popular man in New England. Bailey Zappi. It is Zappi mania, isn't it? He throws a low ball left, wide open Jacoby Myers, who makes a twisting diving catch. Touchdown, Patriots! Throw screen, Herbert to catch 20. There he goes, 10. Nobody's going to touch him. End zone, touchdown, Bears. <laughs> so interesting. Straight up embarrassing. The fans really knew they were that. losing that game, right? Okay, well, uh, sorry, Bailey Zappi. It's Mac Jones on Sunday, actually, until it's until it's not. Patriots have won 12 in a row against the Jets. Patrick, you were first. Uh, what are you thinking? Oh, I'm thinking that it, it's not only just embarrassing, but it's it's like the, the people in uh, Pompeii chanting for Mount Vesuvius. Uh, and then, <laughs> explodes, and then it just explodes. And then it, 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 it all dark. went horribly wrong. That got dark. Mac Jones, uh, clearly the choice. <laughs> And that's a part of the reason, because I do think Mac Jones has a bounce-back game. But I'm looking at this Patriots defense. Uh, the way that they have made plays, ex excluding uh, this past Monday night, but they still even made plays against I Justin Fields uh, on Monday night, uh, especially the rookie corner there. Got a pick six off of Aaron Rodgers. Just the way things have gone in the past few weeks for Zach Wilson, I, I don't see uh, the Jets offense having enough to contend, even at home, even as oh. well as they've been playing. I, I've got the Patriots here 23 to 21. Interesting. Yeah, I've got the Patriots winning almost the exact same score, 24 21, because they have the better quarterback. Patriots fans, what are we doing here? You're embarrassing yourself. Mac Jones did things last year. He was the number 12 ranked quarterback <laughs> in the entire league, according to PFF. He made the Pro Bowl and did the gritty there. Wow. He was accurate. He went through his reads. You don't think the Jets would trade Zach Wilson for Mac Jones right now? This is the guy who has the higher ceiling. It's the guy who I think can do more to this Jets defense, even though they have a good pass rush and a great secondary. They have better weapons in New England this year than they did a year ago for Mac Jones, and I think he's the guy long term, and I think he's going to be the guy this week. You're not attending Zappy Hour? That's no, hour. like, what, is, what are we doing? It's the, what the is name happening? is fun to I like Zappy Hour. Sure. I like Zappy Hour. Sports it's the name. radio. Points. You don't have to do it. Points for sure. I, well, I have the Jets winning, so. There we go. Come on. Happen. 21 to 20 is my final score. And whenever I can work in special teams, I'm going to work in special teams mm. because the Jets have the best special teams in the National Football League. You heard that right. Usually you say that about the Patriots. Or that, that bothers Bill Belichick. You know what? Ooh, so doesn't Belichick bother me. That's why I'm bringing up best gunner duo, fourth best starting field position. Thanks, Braxton Berrios. You're crushing it. He has the highest yard return average. Like, this is a, a, an unsung hero of this Jets team. Yes, we don't have Reese Hall, which stinks, but it's going to be an interesting, it's going to be an interesting matchup because Sauce Gardner ain't gonna let your guy Whoa. Mac Jones or your guy Zappy Hour do much. So Whoa. Zappy like, Hour. You see how she sauce, goes sauce, with the royal sauce, we sauce, and then sauce, comes sauce. at me with the I'm going with you because I'm on Team Hanzoos for this one. Ever Ever since since team Hanzoos for this. I'm this. feeling <laughs> saucy as well. J E T S Jets, Jets, Jets. I'm going Jets 24 <laughs> to 17. Woo, New, York, New York teams in uh, October right now are 11 and 0. I am not touching any other team right now. I'm going Jets. They're a fun team. They're on fire. Also, talk about Mac Jones. Do you think that he, he's still young and impressionable? They're yelling zappy hour at him. Do that's you think hard. he's going to be stoked he's, to go well, out? Well, that's and why it's good. They're, throw in, a few they're in New York. I actually think it is. It is a better thing they're away from Foxborough and those mean fans. <laughs> those meanies. Oh, you, hurt right you think feeling. that you think New York people are known for yeah, being yeah, really, really nice guys there. They're really All right, guys, well. you're 30,000 feet in the air. It is time to do some stretching. Time to do some high knees. Russell Wilson versus the Jags in London. We are talking about that doozy coming up. Jumping. <laughs>
Get your game day started Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern with NFL Game Day Morning. Aaron Rodgers said a trip to Buffalo may be the best thing for the struggling Packers. Kurt Warner's film study may say otherwise. It's Rodgers versus Allen in Warner's Corner. Michael Irvin, remind me, who did you pick to win MVP before the season started? We like that! We like that! This week, Michael sits down with his preseason MVP pick, Kirk Cousins. And it's almost November, and the Eagles are dancing on their own as the only undefeated team left in the NFL. Mooch explains how the Steelers could end the streak. Plus, it's our annual trick-or-treat segment. Kurt, how are the costumes looking? They're great! Thank you! All that and much more Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern. I am excited for Sunday. I'm getting in hair and makeup at Think 4 a.m. What are you going to be? I can't tell you. Oh. It's a yeah, surprise. Uh, guys, by the way, Irv sitting down with Kirk Cousins. It's hilarious. I mean, I hope I he kisses him. It's just cannot wait. I hope he Two kisses of the him. most electric personalities we've got. <laughs> cannot wait. Uh, Kirk Cousins, who's taking on the Cardinals on Sunday. Greg, the Vikings are three and a half point favorites. Can they hold off Arizona? What do you I, think? I think they can. I have them winning 24 to 20. I was trying to think, like, what's special about this team? The only thing they're really great at is field position, but we can't make a video of field position. So I'm going to talk about their pass rush. Uh, Zadarius Smith and Daniel Hunter got it going right before their bye. Now, they were going up against a banged-up offensive line. I've been watching these two guys all year, kind of waiting for them to really break out. And it happened against Miami. Guess what? They're going up against a very banged up offensive line this week, too. Uh, the Cardinals are down at least three starters, and their left tackle is also questionable for this game. And what Zadaria Smith showed against Miami is that he can beat up on your backups, and sometimes that's what the NFL is all about. Can you take advantage of a matchup when the other team doesn't have their best players in? That's the Cardinals' offensive line this week. I think the Vikings get it done because of their pass rush. I'm with you on the Vikings getting it done. I also want to point out they have their best player. Justin Jefferson will be on the field. I have 27 to 23 in this matchup, a four-point win. I love the opportunity. Justin Jefferson wants to be the best re receiver in the league. He wants the best numbers. He wants the most touchdowns. I love it. We need to see him gritty. When you look at the matchup between pretty much any one of their corners, we love Buda Baker. We're, we're going to put an asterisk there. But apart from him, it is a mismatch by big, big, big proportions Ooh. when it comes to Justin Jefferson versus the rest of them. So I expect a, him to reach the end zone. What are you looking at there? Same score. Same. Aww. You know it's going to be right now. Score. We're twins. It's Patrick, what do you like? Osmosis. I, I also have the Minnesota Vikings. I do not have the same score as Change you guys. It. Change it. Change it. It's 29 to 27. Oh, high, higher scoring. I because I like points. I like points, and I think we get a score fest here, mainly because I see the run game of the Minnesota Vikings and their progression this season. Even though uh, they are playing a top 10 rushing defense in the Arizona Cardinals, I love the opportunity to have Dalvin Cook coming off of a bye. He dealt with a shoulder injury earlier in the season. Cynthia already mentioned Justin Jefferson of of course, that's going to be the focus. Too much focus on Justin Jefferson. Leaves some opportunity for Dalvin Cook in the run game. I, I love this matchup. Uh, I am taking the Vikings as well Ooh. across the board. I have a no. closer Ooh. game like Patrick, 27-26. I feel like this is the, this has the, the vibes of something weird could happen. We actually saw like a pulse from the Cardinals. Oh, we, we saw a pulse. <laughs> Take a look right at here. this moment. <laughs> Oh, oh, my God, we even had to blur out the mouth. Twice. Twice. In, in the meeting this morning, I was like, is that tired? Should we show this again? And Patrick was like, I will watch this for the rest of my life. Okay. I love this moment. When they had a little bit of a pulse. They put some points up on the board. I can see I'm not ready to trust them. I feel like they've been a mess otherwise this season. But D-Hop is it's, back. Kyler Murray's It's certainly little... not messy when he's yelling at his coach. I mean, no, <laughs> you saw your gut, uh, feeling was like we could get in trouble here. Meme I, alert. I, this is one where I, we could. I want to change I my think pick it could now. be weird. You Watching change Kyler it. yell. You I want to? Uh, you want to? Do it. Change Do it. it. I'll change, change it. it. I'll change it. Oh, chaos. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Chaotic, love just it. like the Cardinals. Oh, I that's love exciting. It. I love it. Unmeme Woo! alert. Okay, <laughs> not a meme alert anymore. There you go, Cardinals fans. You can think back. Why don't you let me do that? Fear pressure is awesome. <laughs> uh, okay, Ooh, exclusive shot here of Russell Wilson before <laughs> spending four hours annoying all of his teammates on a transatlantic wow. flight. You know, um, do high knees on an airplane next to me while I'm sleeping? You are spending the rest of the flight in an overhead bin. That's what's going to happen to you. Not a threat, just facts. I am way stronger than I look. Uh, Greg, don't try. 
Greg, don't try me, okay? Um, what, what do you like I in this game? I would like Bronco to see you try to put me in the overhead, but I think no it's possible. No problem. I think it's possible. I can lift 20 pounds, no problem. <laughs> I'm picking, <laughs> I wish. I pick the Jags here. I have it 15 to 12, which just feels like a London game type of score. I hope that's not the case. The London Jaguars fans is a real thing. Oh, I actually it's have real. 18 and 15. So it's all <laughs> field goals either way. And I think Trevor Lawrence and uh, Travis Etienne are getting it going with their What's going on over there? <laughs> What happened? What? what did I do? <laughs> Share with the class, teacher. <laughs> the score is objectively funny. It, it yeah, is. 18 to 15. Especially because you were like, it's like 15 to, to 12. Before. Just, there's always a lot of field goals <laughs> in London. Don't check, test my facts. Uh, and you get a lot of field goals when you have a good running game that can't quite finish it off. That's what the Jaguars are right now. They're so close. Their RPO game with Travis Etienne and Trevor Lawrence is starting to get going. And I think you can run the ball on the Broncos. It's a really good defense, but it's easier to run on it on them than it is to pass on them. And you're using Trevor Lawrence's athleticism and his movement skills. I think it's why they felt comfortable trading James Robinson, because it's all about the RPO. It's all about Etienne. Maybe Trevor Lawrence, even if he's not going to be the guy we thought he's going to be, maybe he could be a bigger, more athletic Tua. And that would be ah. good enough. That would be fun. Just be a little more accurate. Like that. Okay, well, I have 21 to 19 in favor of the Jags in this one. Mm. I want to talk about Travis Etienne because okay. he has 116, and that number means rushing yards over expected against a light box. So, you know what's been going on with light boxes? That's what Austin Eckler had success with. That's what Brees Hall had success with. Like, there's a lot of examples of where the Broncos have been giving a light box to opposing running backs, and they just make the mm. most of it. So, ETN, there's no James Robinson to share the load. You really want to play him in all formats. It's like a really fun daily fantasy pick as well. So, that's the difference maker for me. And I don't care if Russell's back. We've seen that he's not 100% or whatever. Mr. Limited. Doesn't matter. I was laughing mainly at Greg's score because my score is also objectively funny because I have the Broncos winning this 17 Ooh. to 16. I look back at Jerry Judy's last three games. He had seven targets, eight targets, and then 11 targets. They are force feeding Jerry Judy and simply based on the odds. I think Jerry Judy catches a long touchdown from Russell Wilson or from from uh, Brett Rippin. Yeah, Brett Rippin. He's it's gotta it be Russ. Either way, unless he gets hurt. One way or the other. It's, it's just too difficult. I, I want to pick the Jags here, but Trevor Lawrence has missed so many throws in the past mm -hmm. couple of weeks. I've been burned in picking them, and Patrick Sertan, Sertan is going to make him pay for one of those. I am going Broncos as well, 17-14. to 14. The Broncos defense has only allowed seven touchdowns, which is the fewest in the NFL. No other team with a losing record has fewer than 13. This Broncos defense is just hanging on for dear life, and Russell Wilson just needs to do something. Cynthia made a genius point. This week, I think that Russ is starting to play in yes. to all of this chaos going on in the outside. He's messing like, with us. He knows that people are going to go all in. And in fact, other teams are starting to buy in. Look, look at this video uh, from Justin Tucker. Roll it. Let's, let's talk to us a little bit, Jay Tuck. I mean, what do you, what do you want to know? What, what are we doing on the plane ride back home? I heard, we're, I heard Lamar's leading us in high knees, no. Ravens flock, let's fly. Oh <laughs> Unlimited. Oh like, everyone's just piling on, and he's going to flip a switch, I think, maybe. I, he's going to keep leaning not. into it. Like, there's going to be more, you know, fast food commercials. He's going to be doing more things, and this, this is going to be long. I think he's this playing into long. it. I think, so. I think I think he's playing into it, too, for sure. Uh, NFL Knockout presented by Caesar Sportsbook is a free-to-play game on NFL.com. Win an exclusive VIP trip to experience the 2023 Pro Bowl, the 2023 NFL Draft, or Super Bowl 57 Weekly, answer 10 questions about Sunday's games and top the leaderboard to win a trip of a lifetime. Visit NFL.com slash knockout to sign up, play, and win. All right, coming up after the break, we got Colts Commanders. Oh, format, Ryan. It was over before we knew it. We didn't even get the sick of us. This is sad. It's like if you weren't bummed out by Russell Wilson, here's some Matt Ryan. He's, he's still Wait till with you this see guy. our next block, baby. <laughs> I just feel bad. All right, welcome back to Game Day View. Okay, so no Matt Ryan this week against the Commanders. Frank Reich coming out this week and giving the job to Sam Ellinger, who has, uh, let me check my notes. I've never thrown a pass in the NFL. Hmm. Uh, Frank, you sure about this? He's made for moments like this, right? I mean, that doesn't mean, is he going to go in and, you know, be the player, the offensive player of the week? I'm not saying that. 
Will he have growing pains? Absolutely, he'll have growing pains. Um, but I can tell you this for sure: there's nobody wave, waving right, white flag. That is not in the DNA. It's not in my DNA. It's not in our players' DNA. I would never do that in a million years. I, I just couldn't do that. I mean, um, this is about winning. We're trying to win a championship, um, and that starts with winning an AFC South championship. We're still in position to do that. All right, it's time for the Drive to Excellence presented by Mercedes-Benz. Greg, I don't know. Um, first of all, we were already robbed on Carson Wentz against the Colts. Now all of this going down in Indy, what's going on? Oh, that's true. We don't get the, the rematch. Uh, but we do get a commander's victory, at least if I'm right. I have them 1916, and I just don't know what to think about Sam Ellinger, but I do know what to think about the commander's running game. It's fun to watch. I'm telling you, they're pretty dynamic, what Scott Turner's got going on. Uh, since they brought Brian Robinson back, the way that they're using him and Antonio Gibson and Curtis Samuel, I think, is having a really underrated year. You got Heineke out there blocking sometimes. You got Heineke as a runner. They just throw a lot at you defensively, and I think this is a game where the better running team is going to win. And weirdly, the Colts are not a very good running team, even though they have Jonathan Taylor. It's because of the O-line. I trust the commanders more. I'm with you. I have the commanders as well, but I only have a one point win, 21 to Ooh. 20 in this matchup. Let's talk about Terry McLaurin. He's kind of like an unsung hero. Last week, he got the better of Jair Alexander, which doesn't happen very often. But when you're scoring touchdowns against a corner of this caliber, you're going to end up on my list. Mm. You're going to get a nice little highlight reel of yourself on this one. I think you saw Taylor Heineke rely on him and use him as his outlet. This is an opportunity here against the Colts for the commanders to show us something. I think they do 21 20. I think the Colts are going to show us something. <laughs> let's go, Patrick. I, let's go. I have a 1916 yeah, score, but I have the Colts <laughs> on the other side of that getting the win because I think the offense has been limited in Indianapolis. There are some things that could not be done with Matt Ryan as the starting quarterback. He was struggling to throw on the run, but now you can get some tight ends involved in the game. You can get more Molly Cox. You can get more Jelani Woods because Sam Ellinger had 16 rushing touchdowns his junior year at uh, Texas. I can't show you any Sam Ellinger NFL highlights because there aren't any, but I think we'll have <laughs> some. Preseason. Uh, he played really well in the preseason. Yeah. He had a 55 touchdown running in the preseason. And I support the preseason. Yeah. I just didn't, I couldn't bring myself to put <laughs> preseason highlights on this show, so I'll show uh, the two tight ends because I think they get more involved in this win. For well, if you won't read preseason highlights, let me tell you what he did. <laughs> Scored four touchdowns, four passing touchdowns, by the way. He had the highest passer rating of any quarterback with a minimum of 15 passing attempts. Attempts. Completion percentage was up there. Look, he can do some things. He I got the Colts playing 24-17. They don't have a lot on him. They're not really going to know what to expect, uh, except for preseason footage. That's He's it. Kind of like oh. a younger, up defenses like this, baby. He's like a yeah, younger Heineke. Third stringers. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, stepping up. Give me Love that. It. There we go. Look at this. this. That was Mike Vick, 2001. They're going to score 30 points. Uh, look, Sam, I know you're watching. If you need encouragement, just look at Andy Dalton. He threw two pick sixes last week, and guess what? He's still starting this week, so you can do it, too. <laughs> Goes Dalton, fires over the middle. The ball is tipped into the air and it's picked off at the 30 yard line. Marco Wilson, he high steps and then he does a flip into the end zone for the touchdown. Marco Wilson with a pick six. Shot it on the spot, picked it out of the air and then hit the Jets. Five receiver set. Dalton straight drop back, throws over the middle and a one handed interception by his ass Simmons in midfield. Back to back, intercept, he returns for touchdown. And Crazy Carl once again has reared his head for the Arizona Cardinals. All right, Dalton's giving it a go again this week against the Raiders. Saints are one and a half point dogs. Patrick, do you believe in the red rifle? Yes, I firmly believe Andy Dalton exists. I do not believe Andy Dalton will win this Come football on, game. I'm not excited. I I'm looking over at this Saints defense, and they have oh. struggled here in 2022, especially considering that Marshawn Lattimore, he's been injured. He's out of this game, and I watched Paulson Adebo struggle against Jamar Chase, which, yes, he's a human being. Most people do, uh, but now it's Devontae Adams, and Devontae Adams has had a solid run in terms of his accomplishments uh, this season. I forget the stat that I was just about to tell you, but Devontae Adams is good. I wish he could have dunked there. That rule change is bad. But yeah, Devontae, huge game. Raiders win it 30 to 26. Yeah, I game. About. I got a problem with with everyone putting on in Dalton. Maybe that's you know you contributed to them I making fun of the rifle. And we walk. do a whole package of the pick six. Dalton's played pretty well. Ah. 
It's been the defense for the Saints. That's why they miss Sean Payton. I, I don't think it's because of the offense. All their offensive numbers are up across the board. It's their defense that it's falling apart. So you get rid of Sean Payton, and suddenly you lose Dennis Allen, who's a great defensive coordinator, a top five defense the last three years. Now he's they're one of the worst defenses in the league. They give up big plays. He's the head coach, but he's not good at being the head coach. We've seen that in Vegas, and he's not good at doing both jobs. Uh, their run defense used to be great. Not great anymore. And their communication in the secondary, you mentioned Lattimore is out this week. Mm -hmm. They don't have their safeties. Their replacements at safety is not working. I just don't trust the defense. I do trust Dalton, weirdly, to score. Okay. Well, I trust a Dalton to score too, but not enough to score more than the Raiders. I have 26 to 25, a very close one in this matchup. But I think the emergence of Josh Jacobs has been a real difference maker. When I think of the Saints defense, I think, oh, you're not going to be able to run on the Saints D that well. But then you look in the numbers, and between the tackles, yeah, they're giving up just a bunch of yards per carry. And that is also a function of many pieces being missing from that safety core, etc. But when I'm looking at what Josh Jacobs is able to do and Josh McDaniels figuring it out for him, I I like this opportunity. I think he's also a really strong play for daily fantasy as well. Now that we have to play daily if you're out of it for your season long already. Mm. But ultimately, I love and it, that's the difference maker for me. And I love him in this matchup. So, Greg, let me get this straight. You're like, Rachel's so mean to Andy Dalton. Oh, she was just like, tell the producer, oh, put together a whole Picks video. Picks the of Raiders, it. anyways. Well, you know who, <laughs> who's not picking the Raiders and who is going to believe in Ooh. Andy Dalton? Yeah. It's this gal right here. I am taking the Saints 27 to 24. Andy Dalton, I know the picks. I know, okay, I get it. Four touchdowns, 361 yards. Why are you playing this sad music? I am going all in on the Saints. He gave this, who was it that caught the interception and flipped into the end zone? He gave this man the best moment of his life. That is fun football, and I stand by that. Interceptions, I don't care. You're playing fun football. Get into it, Greg. Low netta. I love it. And I love the Celine Dion. Uh, oh, Canada. that's what that Canada is. That was my girl. Yeah. My girl. All right, a couple games we haven't hit on yet, and here's why. We are all in agreement, all of us taking the Cowboys, Eagles, Titans, Bengals, and uh. Dolphins, but Cynthia has the Texans keeping it kind of close. The Steelers, not so much. Uh, and a late change. Sneaky okay. Greg alert, changing his pick from the Falcons to the Panthers. I had to do it a little just Greg here. Just Greg's 5-2 <laughs> and two on the year. It's the most All dominant right, force relax. in this show. And P.J. Walker was dominant a week ago. He really played great, and they're missing in Atlanta their two best cornerbacks and a starting safety. So. This really came down to the wire. This happened, like, what, an hour ago? I, like, felt it all week. I was like, I wanted to take the pick. It was just lingering. Just you couldn't yeah. let it no, go. Chico Hubbard's not playing, right? I know. Okay, just okay. major. Uh, <laughs> The Steelers are one of three teams that are at least six and a half point underdogs this week. So are the Packers and Bears. We're going to tell you which of those teams could pull off the upset and give you the precedent to back it up. Coming up next. Want more stats? Just ask Siri. Who leads the league in passing yards? All right, let's do the math. Patrick Mahomes is your passing leader. But the Chiefs are off this week. Here are some of the other guys in the top 15. And Cynthia, you are higher on Jalen Hurts than some others this week. What do you think? I think it's going to be a closer game between the Steelers and the Eagles than one might think, given that the Eagles are undefeated. So I think they're going to have to stay passing longer. And I also think the opportunity to pass on these defensive backs is just a much greater one. And maybe they don't need Jalen Hurts to run as much. I, I think he is a great runner. But let's do some passing instead. All right, switch it up. Well, speaking of Jalen, his Eagles are favored by 10 and a half points, one of three teams favored by over a touchdown this season. And how about this? In six of the seven weeks so far, a six and a half point underdog has not only covered but won the game, including the Bears, <laughs> the Bears, and Panthers. <laughs> I'm a professional, people. Uh, so there you have that, guys. It is a. Uh, it is Halloween this weekend. Is that what we're going towards? It is Halloween this Monday. And I get very excited every single week that it's Halloween because we see all these players dress up. They uh, really go all out. But the coaches, not so much. I had to have a sit down with all of them. Take a look at this. 
Hello, everybody. Hello. Thank you for joining this mandatory Zoom. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I am the spirit leader at NFL. Uh, the league takes our holidays very seriously. And spirit is a big component of team building. I've been noticing over the past few years, players love to dress up for Halloween, but you guys, you guys don't. Uh, think you're too tough. I gotta take the game, game football seriously. No. Everyone loves a clever costume. So, I put out this little suggestion box for all of you guys to send in your costume ideas. I have to approve them, of course, because I feel like some of you guys would get a little weird. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kyle Shanahan, you are up first. You are thinking about going as a big, giant baby. I wear a diaper. Goo goo gaga, I am a baby. Natural position fit. I think that's probably his most natural Sean, position. Sean, I'm not gonna ask you again. You gotta stop putting things in the suggestion box pretending to be somebody else. You're almost, you are almost out of here. You are almost out of here. You're always trying to trick me. I'm starting to notice it. Can you hear me? Andy, not not your turn yet. Okay, Pete Carroll, you are up next. You want to be a danger witch, uh, a chef, or Mr. Um, okay, um, go with no. Those are all in consideration, yeah. All right, we've got one from Mike Tomlin. Uh, this is dumb, and I don't want to do it, and it gets dumber every year. Please stop it. I hate it. Goodbye. What's gone from bad has actually gotten worse in some instances. Okay, I just like wonder how that's constructive. Can you hear me? Andy, not your turn. It's not your turn. So, uh... Uh, Bill Belichick, dare, dare I even read yours? Oh, Bill! Are you already in costume? Oh, you're a zombie. You're in, you're in the zombie apocalypse. You've been attacked by a bear. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Monday Night Football, you guys lost bad. Can you hear me? Andy, it is not your turn. It is not your turn. I will call on you when it is your turn. You know what? I'm done. I'm done. Holiday Spirit does not exist with these people. I'm out. I'm done. I am. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if they can uh, pull out some good costumes, okay? I, I don't... think Kyle Shanahan would be the most likely uh, guy to dress up as a little baby. A little, ba little baby with a diaper? <laughs> I'm so sorry, Kyle Shanahan. Okay, coming up around the corner, we are giving you our Write This Down, something we feel very strongly about. So don't go anywhere. Get your pad, get your paper, get your pen. Get your Halloween costumes, baby. Let's go. All right, it is time for Write This Down. Before we make our predictions for week eight, anyone got any predictions about how many push-ups Greg can do? Uh, what is happening? Oh, what? interesting. Do we have a clip? Is Deal this it? Speaker. Is this it? It is time for you to get down push -ups. and give us four. I mean, I don't know how my form is looking here. Four push-ups. All right, you got it right here. Well. How would I know? This hasn't come up since. That's good uh, for Great two. Four. Maurice Jones drew, yeah, said that I said Mac Jones was coming back into this game and we decided to put four push-ups on it. But then I just four. started going. Look at the I counter. You're doing great. Ten. Wow, I said 12. Good job. Oh, oh my. I'm just looking at it. Oh, I'm wow. talking, too. I'm, like, giving analysis. It was supposed to play okay, out the Greg. whole time. This is embarrassing, though. Like, there's... This isn't embarrassing. You're the one that had to keep wow, going. Greg. You could have tapped you, out. Did you tell them to play this because you did so many push-ups? No, of course not. No, he totally did. I got the email this morning saying, Greg, please play that. See, this is what I'm saying. This is actually I how feel feels. deep shame seeing what? this. That is like the that. biggest lie. You're totally Russell yeah. Wilsoning what? us. That is You're the totally question. You're totally Russell Wilsoning why, us. Why Literally. does it fill you with shame? Because that's... That shouldn't feel you. Anytime you see yourself on camera just doing something goofy <laughs> like that. I think you that. should try and break your record right here. Right I was thinking, I can't. Come I'm, on. I'm all Come on. locked in. Come on. Come on. We got, we got 30 right seconds now. to go. No. I am not doing it. We're writing this seconds. down. We're writing this down. I know. I think we've totally next to write this down. Come on. Come on. There's nothing to write down. I haven't even worked it out at all. Are we all Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 20 seconds. Bang them out. Go, go, go. We're, we're, gonna good, have, good. Go. we're not gonna have enough time. At to least see you, Greg doing one, one in a row. Two. Two. <laughs> have a good week. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't actually think you would do it. Oh, <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Oh, come on. <laughs>